Hey, everybody. My name is Joe Piverunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm that covers disruptive technology investing for a broad audience of retail and institutional investors. Today, we're going to talk about a company called Brainship. And here on this slide, the title says, Why We're Avoiding Brainship Stock Like the Plague. And I want to qualify that by first starting out and looking at the sort of red flags that we look for when we're investing in stocks. So why don't we forget about brain chip for a second and look at this slide, which is a list of bullet points taken from a piece we published called Investing in Penny Stocks is for Dummies. And in that piece, we highlighted a number of red flags that are telltale signs of companies that when we see these flags, we run the other way as fast as we can. So We'll just go through these real quick. The first is that when a company is founded through a reverse merger of a shell corporation, the only thing worse than that is when a company, a tech company emerges from a mining company. That's the probably the, the smell of death when it comes to stocks that we avoid. Companies that possess a patent or a small number of patents that they tout and say that they're the future, um, a lot of these companies' revenues will always be just right around the corner. Most never have revenues. You'll often see individuals on stock boards talking these companies up, saying how great they are. If you say anything negative about them, you'll get attacked. They'll say you're short selling. You'll see, and if you look at company websites, press releases, you'll see a lot of agreements that never go anywhere. And you can go back in time, four or five years, and find all these promises that are broken. And of course, these companies will typically communicate very aggressively with shareholders and on a very frequent basis. That's, that's not normal. So. With that aside, we're going to go ahead and start talking about a company called Brainship. Now, our story starts in uh, 2015. This is the half-year financial report we started by looking at. And everything that we're going to go through today, this is all accessible on the ASX website. These are all filings that were made with the ASX, and anybody can pull these up anytime they want. That's how we put this presentation together. So in this half-year financial report, they talk about how a company that used to be known as Asiana Limited was mining bauxite. That picture you see there is their bauxite claim. And that's what they were doing. That was their principal activities for mineral exploration in Madagascar while they were looking for other business opportunities. Well, what they settled on was a pivot from mining into neuromorphic computing. So later on that year, October 2015, they acquired a company called Brainship, more or less a reverse merger, and they started talking about their opportunities. So immediately they're having current discussions with potential technology partners, series of products in the pipeline. They're going to focus on smartphones and IoT, and they put together some milestones here. So they have this uh, milestone two delivery within, within one month, and then you can see milestone three in the first quarter of 2016 and then so on and so forth. And that's great when a company puts forth milestones. Now, the next time that we come across something interesting is when there's a trading halt in October of 2015. Note that's the same month that they put out their investor deck. And they say, we're extremely pleased to have achieved milestone two ahead of schedule. Now, this is odd. A company says they're going to have a milestone in one month, and then they say they're ahead of schedule. That's not normal. And again, we see here, they're talking about having held discussions with a number of Fortune 500 companies who assisted in the design of this milestone that took less than a month and also expressed an interest in partnering with Brainship to commercialize the technology. That sounds great, right? Um, then again, we go down to early 2016. They have a corporate update and outlook. It says, uh, talking about their partners are expected to be signed in 2016. And you got to pay close attention to this. These licensees are expected to design and manufacture apps utilizing their technology, which will generate NRE fees, right? So there's talk about generating fees and revenues. That's what we're looking for. We're really interested. Remember, this is what coming up on six, seven years ago when they're, when they're having these, uh, six years ago, having these conversations. So go to the next trading halt. You know, one of the things you'll notice when you're looking through their past, um, uh, filings with ASX, there's quite a few trading halts. And this one is because they're going to announce a major technological advancement, and that is a unique autonomous feature extraction system. Great. So they're developing more technology. Shares resume trading. Oop, another trading halt less than a month later. What's going on here? Well, 
They're going to request trading of the company's securities to halt so that they can make a, what they say here, a more detailed release regarding a significant technological development. Well, that was milestone three, if you recall from the earlier slide. So now where are we at? Well, they accomplished the three milestones that they set out to. This is from the annual report in 2015. And now the fourth milestone is a first license agreement. And here in their report, they say significant potential customers have been waiting for the validation provided by the early milestones. That's great. And it says we are now in the marketing and commercialization phase. Sounds great. Then they make an acquisition. And this looked particularly promising. They acquired a French computer vision technology company. They said the acquisition will accelerate the initial sales of brain chips snap. That's great. And then it says here, establishes BrainShip as a revenue generator in the computer vision sector and provides dedicated sales and marketing presence in Europe. That's really positive. So we should start to see some revenues now. We should start to see some meaningful revenues. This uh, slide shows a number of other things that transpired in 2016, a joint development agreement with Inilabs, a German dynamic vision sensor company, they have a commercial marketing agreement with the global IP supplier. They're working with Cisco. They're on target to meet milestone four of revenue producing license deal in 2016. Products commercially available today. Look at this one, upper right. Rolling out game protection technology at major Las Vegas casino following successful completion of trial. Read this bullet point. This, the rollout will deliver an immediate and growing revenue stream to BrainShip. That's very exciting. Bottom right. Last quarterly update released to ASX on 31 October 2016, they talk about commercial engagements, trials, and meaningful discussions with large casino operators, airports, schools, natural resource providers, and traffic control providers, amongst others. Very promising. Revenue should be pouring in. 2017, the following year. Again, we're talking about something that's five years ago. Read through these. Announces an engagement in civil surveillance, another casino deployment, more machine vision inspection system. This one in red, pay close attention to this. BrainShip ships first BrainShip accelerator to a major European car maker for evaluation in ADAS and AV systems. Exciting. Last one, BrainShip to provide AI video analytics for large scale municipal projects. So very promising stuff. If this happened five years ago, we'd, we're really looking forward to seeing how much revenue this brings in. We've got, go to the following year. March 2018, year-end update, the company expects, pay attention to these words, continued sales growth, implying that they already have sales growth, with OEMs, integrators, partners, existing customers, yada, yada, yada. Here is the 2018 um, year-end update given by the CEO, and on one side, he talks about the lowlights after talking about the highlights, and two bullet points say, BC Studio end-user sales weak. BC Studio OEM sales weak. Well, no kidding, Lewis, no kidding. The sales are weak. That's not very good. And here's what the revenues look like. So this company, after all this work and after all these great things that have transpired five years ago, and, and when, when, when we go back here, when we got to 2018, we got tired of looking at these. There are promises made in 2019, in 2020, 2021, it just, it just got tiring looking at all the progress they were making, and this is the end result. In the last four years, they brought in a whopping $2.734 million. That's the extent to which all this, these press releases that were put out, all this talk about partnerships and revenues and fees and royalties, that's what we have. You're looking at more recently, there are some fixed revenues coming in over the quarters. Where are the revenues? This is almost a $1.5 billion company. Where are the revenues? How long do we have to wait to see revenues? How many promises are going to be made until we finally see some meaningful revenue? So a real concern there. Now, the big icing on the cake, when we published a research piece about BrainChip, the, the dead giveaway that it's being promoted and that it's being manipulated was the barrage of attacks that followed. So everybody had to come by and give their peace of mind, usually without being able to articulate any sort of an argument about why this great company um, should be given any sort of consideration by investors. And the latest 
thing to come out would be this is a concept car from Mercedes-Benz, quite a nice looking electric car with a lot of cool stuff on it. Again, a concept car. And in the marketing collateral that accompanies this concept car, we can read, they say, working with California-based AI experts brain chip, Mercedes-Benz engineers develop systems based on Akita hardware and software. The example they give here is hot word detection that is five to 10 times more efficient than conventional voice control. And hard to see how that how that's a value proposition when voice recognition is pretty common, you know, pretty common functionality these days, but it it's, must be something cool because Mercedes Benz is working on it with him and that's great. And they go on to say, although neuromorphic computing is still in its infancy, systems like these will be available on the market in just a few years. So they worked with Mer Mercedes Benz on a concept car. Forgive us for being a bit skeptical if the work they're doing with yet another big company doesn't turn into revenues. There's, if, if this doesn't realize revenues, it means nothing. And there's nothing to look at for this company in any respect until they can show revenues, especially considering revenues have been promised for so long. How long are you going to keep people waiting? And what you can do is go on to the online forums. It's quite funny. So there's two types of problems with stocks like these, and they come in the form of manipulators. These are groups of people, meme stock types, that will try to manipulate a stock. And then you have promoters. These are the pump and dump types. Now, we're not sure which one of these classes could be both are manipulating or promoting this stock, but you can go onto these forums and you can see it in action. So this is a great meme where the manipulators are actually making fun of the bag holders. And it just goes to show how blatant they are when talking about the sort of manipulation that's happening with this particular stock. Now, what will happen is they'll come by on this video. You'll see the comments, inevitably see the comments, and we'll start hearing the accusations. So we're just going to go through and preempt that. We're not short the stock. We don't short stocks. We never have. Shorting is a fool's errand. We weren't paid to write the article by anyone. Nobody paid us. We're not in cahoots with the competition and trying to badmouth the company. We're not assuming everyone is stupid. A lot of very intelligent investors get caught up in stories, in pre-revenue stories, and become bag holders. We've been doing this stuff for 20 years, and we, we could see this stuff a mile away. Companies that promise and promise and promise and promise and never deliver. So when we, going back to that first slide earlier, pointed out all these red flags, you can take that list, you can print it out, and you can go through and check the boxes when you watch this presentation. And then all the other baseless conspiracy theories that we proposed, those are false as well. So in conclusion, this was also, this meme here was also taken from one of these forums. In conclusion, there's three points we'd like to make. And the first is we don't invest pre-revenue. Never have, never will. Brain ship's not an exception. We avoid sales by press release. Whenever we see a company making a lot of promises over the years and nothing comes to fruition, it's a dead giveaway that Rarely will ever anything ever happen. And we don't believe promises are worth $1.587 billion, which is the current market cap of BrainShip. So you can go ahead and read the research piece that we published in September 2020, pretty much saying the same things. This is a little bit more comprehensive look. Again, if we wanted to make this presentation five times longer, we could have easily done that by going through all the press releases and trading halts and promises that this company's made we wish them the best of luck. We hope that their technology does something great, but we're not going to hold our breath. So if you have comments, please put them in the comments section. Thank you very much for taking your time. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because we'll be covering other more promising companies in the future. Thank you very much.